Thank you, Gar. Mm -hmm. um, we are, uh, it is October 6, 2020, and uh, it is 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon, and we are starting uh, a work session before our council meeting for this evening. Uh, so, calling the meeting to order. Our first topic will be uh, to receive a report, hold a discussion, and give staff direction to the community service office. And I believe we hear from either Hannah. Hi, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm well. How are y'all? Doing very well. Thank you. Please go right ahead. Okay. And I have uh, Mercedes in here with me. I'm just going to get our slideshow going. Okay. Is everyone seeing the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, great. So Mercedes is gonna start us off. Okay. Hello, Mercedes. Hello, everyone. Good to, good to sort of see you all. Uh, we are uh, presenting tonight uh, our, basically our response to what it was like before COVID and uh, how we responded uh, when the facilities had to shut down and now uh, that we have resumed uh, or entered a new phase of operations. So we responded, we adapted, and we're back. Uh, first, we're going to give the report about the public library. Before the library had to close on March 16th, we were open six days a week. Uh, we had weekly programs. Uh, we had a lot of traffic in the library. Uh, different parts of the library saw different uh, numbers of people. The computers were super popular. Uh, not only were people using the computers for homework, for job applications, but simply just entertainment. Uh, we always had people in the library using their own uh, laptops to access the Wi-Fi. You would see students doing their homework. Uh, sometimes you see business people. Uh, and then just basically a lot of people just using the facility. Uh, whether it was a scheduled program or just having a comfortable place to, to study or use a facility. Uh, and we, our emphasis at that time with all of our programs, our goal was to serve the community, but also bring in the community and have the library uh, be a hub. Uh, the picture that you have there is a, a group that has performed for us several different occasions uh, in our outreach when we did the Dia de los Muertos. Uh, but then they also uh, performed for us this past uh, February when we had our census festival. Uh, and just showing you all the different ways that we reached the community. Uh, when we had to close on March 16th due to COVID, uh, we quickly uh, shifted gears. Uh, first, we started a massive cleanup of the library. Uh, our staff actually took down every uh, book, audiobook, and game, and cleaned everything. Uh, so each item, we have about 104,000 physical items were cleaned individually, uh, as well as all the other surfaces they, they cleaned. When we resume, resume services back on June 1st, uh, we started with a, sort of a curbside service. It was uh, order ahead. We started out first in the meeting room. Uh, and then after a few weeks, we went to uh, actual curbside service. Uh, we were very busy when we first announced that we were doing curbside. We had so many calls. Uh, people were really grateful that we actually uh, resumed services. Uh, during that time period, you see that we had uh, approximately 1,300 uh, orders. Uh, and what curbside services is, uh, we used a Google form. We posted it on our website and we have heavily advertised it on Facebook and social media and also uh, traditional news outlets. And people could uh, go on the uh, Google form, uh, fill out what they wanted, uh, whether they had specific titles or authors. Uh, if they didn't know what they wanted, uh, they could choose a grab bag of adult books or children's books. And uh, just like your grocery store orders, we would uh, fulfilled the order and then they would come and pick it up at an appointed time. So that proved to be very popular. Uh, we started first just with the books and then we started adding the grab bags and that was uh, really helpful as well. Uh, later in the summer, we had a need 
we always had the need, but we decided to go ahead and open up a laptop for public to use. So we had a laptop in the lobby and that worked out really well. IT was uh, awesome. They came over and they got us set up. And so they brought the public printer into the lobby. And so people were able to use a computer as well as print. Uh, and that was invaluable because so many people don't have access to a printer, even with the Wi-Fi available 24 seven. Uh, printing is something that uh, if you don't, that there are very few places where you can go and, and get uh, do printing. Uh, so that was helpful. Uh, while we were closed, we also added to the digital collection. Uh, we have Overdrive, which is the ebooks and e audiobooks, and we uh, added as many items as possible. We even did an, a line item transfer of, from our books and materials since we weren't circulating as much of those to our digital collection, which proved to be very popular. So the entire time that we were closed, we were still serving the public. Uh, we issued library cards uh, through email. Uh, and so people were actually able to have a library card to use for the curbside delivery, or they could use it for the e-audiobooks. We also did a huge amount of weeding of outdated materials. Uh, and that's something that it's, it's an ongoing project, but that was a time where we were able to really c concentrate on that. Uh, the staff was uh, jumped on board and they quickly learned how to make, uh, how to move our programs. We were about to go into our summer programs. They learned how to create uh, videos. Uh, so they did a lot of, uh, they did some podcasts. Uh, they created a lot of online content, gardening videos, story time, uh, STEAM programs. Uh, the picture you have there is of one of our staff persons that uh, is ASL, uh, and she's fluent in ASL, so she did that for our story time. And then you see Emily, our uh, program coordinator, so we moved a lot of our, we moved all of our programs that are in phase uh, to online. As we mentioned before, uh, we did a lot of staff development. So we did uh, workshops that we always mean to do, but aren't able to because we have a lot of customers in the building. So everybody was able to participate in some sort of continued education. Uh, while we were close to the public, we still had uh, just regular day-to-day -day tasks of the library. Uh, during that time, the annual library report was due to the Texas State Library and Archives Commission. Uh, we did a lot of records retention. Uh, we applied for grants and uh, in, uh, during that time period, we also received several grants. The picture that you have there is of our quarantined materials. So even while we were closed, before we started the curbside delivery or pickup, uh, people could still return their items to us. And so what we did is we quarantined them first for 15 days and then we went down to seven days. Uh, and so that's just a picture of all of our quarantined materials. And we still continue to quarantine items as they come in. Uh, yesterday, uh, October 5th was our uh, beginning of our phase two of our uh, library reopening. Uh, so we are allowing people to come into the library uh, by appointment. We have sessions from uh, our sessions from 10 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. Uh, people can come uh, select their materials or use a computer or just uh, browse. And so that gives them a good opportunity to look around, see what we uh, what new materials we have purchased since then. And then uh, after that hour is closed, we closed. So it's basically a window uh, for their appointment where they can come into the library. The door closes uh, on odd hours and uh, then we clean everything. Uh, our custodial person comes and sprays and, uh, and then we clean all the surfaces. And so uh, we still have, uh, so we started yesterday and it was wonderful. We had a lot of really excited people, people that just really missed us and we missed them. So it was very nice to see them. Uh, as you can see, we, uh, we moved a lot of excess furniture out of the way. Uh, so the furniture that uh, remains, there are very few chairs. Uh, they're all socially distant. Uh, the computers, we had 21 computers. We're starting off with six computers. We purchased plexiglass so that uh, every station that is in operation is currently surrounded by plexiglass. And, uh, and on top of that, everything is at the minimum six feet uh, from each other. 
Uh, and you can see there uh, the picture of our circulation desk with the plexiglass that our maintenance staff uh, installed for us. Uh, so all of this has been uh, kind of a le new learning experience where you uh, reach out to other libraries to find out what they're doing. Uh, there are always a lot of discussion groups on Facebook and uh, we learn from each other. Uh, we have, during the summer, we did cancel our in-person programs. As we mentioned earlier, we went to online content but now we are uh, slowly phasing in the uh, in-person programs, but still offering some uh, online programs. Uh, we still have the grab and, co grab and go kits, uh, which we have, uh, we did for the books. And then the staff did a wonderful job of creating story time kits for the summer. Uh, so in lieu of the Wednesday story time, they had kits that they could, uh, the families could come and pick up. And then uh, Crystal and Emily also made uh, packets or kits for adults to take home as well. Uh, so as we mentioned here, uh, so we are in the browse and go phase. We are encouraging short visits to the library, but, uh, but really they have an hour to look around. Uh, so it's not, it's not a, a, you know, they can still browse leisurely. Uh, and as we mentioned, we have computers and uh, printing available because that's still important. And we are continuing our curbside. Uh, it's been very popular and some people, even though they know that we're open, that have decided that for various reasons they would prefer to do curbside. And so it seems like we'll be able to accommodate the two services at least for uh, the time being. And now I'll turn it over to Hannah. Hey, hello again. This is Hannah Anderson, Assistant Director of Community Services. And we, as, as you already know, we share the building with the library. Before COVID, we were also open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. We had classes and programming five nights a week, a jam-packed schedule. The basketball gym was full all day with kids playing basketball. We had very popular summer camps uh, I believe they were almost at capacity last summer. And we also have several different rental venues that are available. Liberty Hall is a building that people can rent. Then we also have our park pavilions, as well as the gymnastics room in the rec center you can book on Saturdays for birthday parties. Finally, we have year-round youth and adult sports leagues, including, including futsal, which is indoor soccer, outdoor soccer, softball, basketball, and volleyball. And our recreation manager, Vicki Schmidt, had increased revenue every year over the past four years since she's been here. And so we really had great momentum going with all of our offerings. Because we are a recreation center, we try to price all of our activities to be affordable and cover whatever costs we have. We don't try to make a huge profit on anything. So that's always in the back of our mind when we're creating a new program or uh, uh, working on a league, we balance the registration fee with the cost to run the program. So that spreadsheet that you see, recreational supplies, that includes things like uniforms and trophies. Recreational instruction, those are uh, instructors that we use inside this building for Zumba, um, clogging, and then rec recreational services, those are uh, people that we contract out. So umpires, referees, people that we use to main manage our um, any of our sports leagues. So it's hard to see this as a bright spot, but because we had less revenue, we had to spend less. Um, so as you can see on that far right column, that's all the money that we saved. And you can't see, but I'm doing air quotes. We saved that money because we didn't have those programs. And we uh, COVID shut us down pretty much in the middle, uh, halfway through the fiscal year. And you can see that that, uh, that budget there reflects that. This is just to give you a little bit more idea on what kind of revenue we were used to. Uh, gymnastics classes, we made $8,000 June through September last year. Of that, $6,000 is what the instructor makes and $2,000 is what the city uh, makes and uses to, puts back into the facility. 
And this year, of course, we are far behind, but those classes are growing again. We have taken a lot of safety precautions and are limiting capacity, uh, but we still want those kids to be able to continue with their classes. And daily gym, uh, I honestly did not realize we made so much on our daily gym pass. It's just $2 and it gets you in for the full day to use the weight room, the showers and the basketball court. And so we obviously were closed for a while and then we've started back up with weight room appointments. So that's where that $132 comes from. Okay. And we, on our side, reopened on June 1st. While we were closed, we started taking calls for the COVID-19 hotline and we are still doing that with help from the library. Tai Chi, this class moved over from the senior center. Obviously the senior center closed and I believe is still closed. And so we were able to offer that for free here and they have a dedicated group of people who attend. We've done one round of craft bags that were very popular. One of our new classes is sign language that is being offered both in person and online and it's going quite well. I already, already mentioned the weight room appointments Park pavilions, they're not being rent, they're not rentable right now, but they are just free for all to use first come first served. We helped Kinney Reyna coordinate a virtual 5k back in June. We usually do a 5k called the running of the blueberries for the blueberry festival and we had a good turnout for that. Uh, adult softball and soccer start next week. Um, soccer we're hoping we have enough teams to do it. So if any of you know anyone, uh, get in contact with me. And then finally, rec to go is something new that we're trying. It's actually an idea we had tossed around a while ago, but the this current situation encouraged us to go for it. Uh, it'll be free rentable equipment for pickleball, disc golf, and bocce ball, and we'll add more items uh, depending on popularity. The library has something similar with the Library of Things, and uh, SFA also does, but it's only for college students. So we're gonna test the water, see, see how that goes. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. We have uh, faced the same challenges that pretty much everyone has. Uh, but I did wanna point out something, something that uh, Mercedes and I had talked about uh, halfway down, learning how to provide online content. It's not as simple as just doing what you were already doing, but with a camera on. There is a lot of uh, preparation that goes into it. And uh, she gave the example that something she's been offering that is a 30 minute product. She has gotten it down to an hour and a half of active time uh, of her just to, just to get to that. So it is a lot of work uh, to come up with digital content. And then looking forward, uh, the Civic Rec online software, I just want to mention that real quick. It came at a very opportune time because it allows people to sign up for, say, soccer without ever having to come to the rec center. They can do it at two in the morning. Um, it, you know, it, it, is, it limits the face-to-face -face contact that our people have to have. Um, and so that, that's been very opportune. Um, Contingency plan for suspected or positive cases. We did have to shut down briefly back in June after an employee tested positive. So we do have a, a, a plan and we know that it depends on what type of exposure and what, what employee it is. Um, but knowing what to do if say a Zumba participant tests positive, how do we handle that? Um, that is, that's one of our questions going forward. Winter break camp is typically something that we offer for uh, parents to sign their kids up when basically when their kids are out of school. Don't know how we're going to handle that uh, before I, I figured it could be done virtually easily. But now with kids having been doing the virtual thing for a semester, are they going to be tired of looking at a computer screen? Should we offer it in person or not at all? And then this is not included in the uh, PowerPoint, but um, going forward, it was it was easy to think about doing soccer and softball outside uh, because they're out, uh, excuse me, it was easy to think about doing adult soccer and softball because they're outside, 
but indoor futsal, is that something that we should try to plan or are we still not wanting to, to attempt the, the indoor sports? Um, Cause sports are allowed under CDC guidelines, but obviously things like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is uh, contact heavy, uh, we, we, can't, we can't even think about bringing back yet. And then uh, I'm gonna hand it back over to Mercedes to discuss the, the following items. Oh, I did want to point out something that we had been in big discussions about. Uh, not only do we have concerns about, uh, we're, we, we've we done a real, uh, I feel like the staff has done a really good job of brainstorming uh, how to provide services. Uh, and so uh, how to continue to provide services. Uh, one of the challenges that we're facing is how to provide computer assistance uh, because when uh, people come in, in fact, I had this lady this morning that uh, needed to print a bus ticket. And many libraries are suggesting that people bring someone to help them with the computer use. Uh, but that seems to be pretty naive and also doesn't, uh, not everybody has somebody that they can ask to, to come along with them. Or if they have friends or family, sometimes the friends or family are Kind of in the same boat where they don't have uh, really good computer skills so our staff is uh that is a concern not just amongst our staff but other staff uh we have been uh very fortunate we have a great it staff and uh, they helped us research some products uh, and it turns out the scheduling software that we currently have and, and pay for has a feature where we can provide remote assistance uh, so that'll help us with uh being able to if somebody's on a computer, they don't know what to click on or what to type, uh, we from the safety of the circulation, circulation desk can uh, pretty much take over their computer and provide remote access. Uh, so we can still, uh, we'll still need to have input from them obviously to know what it is that they're trying to do. Uh, but this is one way that we're able to provide assistance. So we really, want to make sure that we're still providing the basic services that people need. Uh, we know that libraries are a great source for technology uh, and we're just trying to make sure that we're doing it in a manner that's safe for the customer as well as for us. Uh, we did buy a lot of uh, face shields for face shields for the staff and voice amplifiers to help us uh, maintain that social distance. Uh, but with all the programs that we've, we've had, we are making sure as well as the rec center uh, that we're thinking about how to keep people six feet apart and uh, any other things that we need to think about as far as sharing supplies, uh, things of that nature. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we're gonna continue to do the hybrid programs. Uh, so we will, we know that some people are ready for us to, uh, to meet face to face. Uh, some people still aren't comfortable with that. So as much as possible, we're gonna try to, to offer uh, in-person programs that we videotape, much like you've seen uh, church services do, uh, so that people at home can still participate. Uh, so we're we're slowly going into that. Uh, and we did, as we mentioned, uh, space out our furniture. We removed some furniture. We removed a lot of toys uh, in the children's department. Uh, we make sure that everybody that comes in is wearing a mask. Uh, and we're just, have incorporated the habit of making sure that we're cleaning after each person uh, uses a, a surface. Uh, our main goal now is to uh, move forward because we want to return to our previous state as far as uh, being a community hub. And so that is our end goal is to have people have a fuller building, uh, but still keeping in mind all those safety uh, considerations. Oops. Uh, Hannah, did you have anything you wanted to add? Sure. Okay. And I'm taking it over to Hannah. Okay. That that's all we had um, for y'all, and uh, we are happy to answer any questions um, and turn it over to to Mario. Um, Mario, is there anything you want to add before council starts discussing? No, Mayor, it, it was just an opportunity for staff to uh, get in front of a council and just share what uh, 
what they've been up to these last many months and how we're looking forward to uh, uh, operating in the, for the next few months. Okay, great, thank you. Well, I know the last six months have been uh, very challenging and I can, uh, I do wanna say I appreciate your creativity and your flexibility and the responsiveness uh, that you've had in identifying needs um, of our community and doing so in a safe manner. Uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Bolden. Did you have any uh, questions or comments? And you may be on, you may need to unmute. Okay, let's move on to Mr. Hens and we'll come back to Mr. Bolden. All right. Uh, I appreciate the presentation. I, really, I was encouraged. I was wrestling with uh, trying to solve the problem, but you already had the answer for the remote uh, assistance on the computer. I thought, oh my gosh, that probably is a pretty big hub for a decent percentage of the population that doesn't have computer access at home. But that is going to be close quarters no matter how you slice it. So I love that you all already figured that out. I was thinking, man, I could lend my IT guy, but of course you'll have a great answer. Um, no, I, I love uh, what you've done. I, I probably owe you a few bucks. I think my son had some... Uh, some books for like six months, so I, I don't know. I, I I'm due I'm due to come by, but uh, no, I appreciate the the uh, the adaptations that you've made. You've done a great job. Okay, thanks, uh, Mr. Anderson. Yes, uh, just kind of to uh, in in a way parrot what Mr. Hen said. Uh, um, I really appreciate the presentation and the fact that that y'all have found some really um, as good as possible, given the circumstances, solutions for a lot of the, the problems that, that no one has faced before. Um, and I, I also have a couple of late uh, library books that my daughter checked out. So we're in the same boat, Garth. <laughs> but uh, beyond that, thank you very much for, for all of your work and all of, uh, all of your creativity and the, the presentation on all of that. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Ms. Fisher. Me three on the late books. Um, <laughs> always, every time, there's not one time that we've checked out books and we've got them, got them in on time. But um, no, I just, I am constantly awed by both the library and, and the rec center programming that you guys do and the great service that you provide to the community and going through y'all's PowerPoint um, before tonight and just seeing how you guys have have adapted and kept moving. And, and, and I know it's not easy. I know, like you said, Hannah, it's not a flip um, and you just do it online and it's easy. I get that. Um, and it's just, it's a totally invaluable resource. Um, and all I hear is good things about, about about these parts of, of, of the city. And so thank you guys both and your staff so much. Okay, and let's, uh, Mr. Bolden. Mr. Bolden, can you hear me? And you will need to, yeah, now, can you, let's see if we can hear you. We don't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Bolden, we cannot hear you. Um, well, I tell you what let's do. We can do one of two things. We can let um, put you on the phone with whoever, if either uh, Matt or Michael or whoever's with uh, IT and see if we can uh, fix that and while and then I'll talk just a little bit and we can try try you again. Nod your head. It, is that okay? You want to nod your head up and down? Okay. So whoever's here with us with IT, would you please uh, give Mr. Bolden a call? And if you need his number, uh, just text uh, myself or, or Mario, and he will be happy to give that to you. Um, I did have a couple of of, of things. Um, one, I noticed that uh, Mercedes mentioned that you were in phase two and um, with your reopening with the browse and go, do the phase match for 
the rec center and the library? Are you all on the same schedule, so to speak? For phase one, yes, we wanted to coordinate everything. We expanded. So our phase two was going to include park pavilion rentals and uh, opening the fishing pier, several things. And that's right when the CDC guidelines uh, became more strict again. So we sort of scrapped it and we've just added things slowly. We're, I mean, right now, obviously phase three would probably be back to normal. Um, and so uh, it, it was effective uh, before and I think it, it's working well for the library. Um, we are still, we're coordinating our hours at least. So when we added two hours, uh, cause we were open from 12 to six and then we made it 10 to six and we, we stayed the same and we'll continue to do that. Okay, so you're just continuing to be very flexible and responsive. I know that um, Hannah, the uh, rec center also sent out a survey earlier. Are you all, is that how you're getting information from um, a lot of citizens by doing uh, surveys? We only tried it for that one. The, the purpose was to see if we should try to do a youth basketball and youth volleyball league. And it was on request from our uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. They didn't. They didn't want to. They weren't ready to make that decision at our meeting when we discussed it. So they said, "How about you send out a survey, get people's feedback?" And so we sent it to not to the community at large, but to uh, old participants, coaches, volunteers, uh, the the city, city staff. Um, so we tried to get a good uh, sprinkling of of different stakeholder groups, I guess you could say. Uh, and the results were sort of inconclusive. They, they were just all over the, the board, just like how everyone, just like people's opinions of, of what's going on right now. So it, it it did, it provide a lot of insight and, and we're not against doing another survey for future issues to, to gauge people's reactions. Uh, so, so yes, we would be, we'd be interested in doing again uh, for something else. Oh, okay. Well, I, I was just asking how the, the response was. I mm -hmm. have been living with this for the last uh, six or seven months, and um, you know better than anyone what's happening and what's going on. Um, let's, thank you very much for that. And let's see if we can reconnect with Mr. Bolden. Are you there? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, <laughs> I didn't forget what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, uh, that's two things. Uh, it was mentioned that there were six uh, computers. Uh, how, how often are they in service? Is that eight hours a day or so many hours per day? Yes, uh, so the library is open for, uh, whether it's for browsing, for using a computer, uh, 10, for one hour windows from 10, 10 a.m. to 11, 12 to one, two to three, four to five. And so they're in use for one hour. We have six computers and people just call us. And we also take walk-ins. Uh, two of those okay. computers are 15 minute computers. And we found that to be super helpful because sometimes people just need to print. And we wanna make sure that we we have uh, circulation of the computers. So there, there's no, is there uh, no priority list like students? at SFA or high school, uh, general public? We haven't had to do that yet. This is all our, only our second day, and we're still thinking that maybe some people don't quite know that we're open yet, uh, so that might change. Uh, we, we have our plan for phase two, and we've already adopt, adapted several different things to it. Uh, for instance, uh, in the beginning, we were encouraging people to just come pick up their items and uh, make a quick quick trip. Uh, but some people said they need they had their own laptop, but they wanted to uh, they didn't have anywhere to to sit, any air conditioning. And so at first we were uh, thinking, well, that's not our our plan. But then we thought, well, it, it's not going to hurt anything. Let's have people inside using a laptop. Uh, so we've been flexible even as as we're going along. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, you know that uh, the mission sisters are calling me every day asking me 
when they were going to be able to come back. <laughs> so I, I'm pushing them off, but they may start storming the door up there soon. Well, we're making plans because we do want to resume services. Uh, we have a lot of people that that uh, online isn't for relationships, for being able to gather to be a community hub. Uh, you can go through the motions of a craft or an activity, but it's the human connection that people are missing. And so we're well aware that people people are missing that and need that. So tell your lady <laughs> that, we're, that we'll, we'll be back. Now, because you know that group is not, uh, they are not IT people. <laughs> they have a long way to go before they get they want to sit behind a computer. But thanks anyway, we, I mean, we, you know, we always enjoyed our sessions there and we appreciate the hard work you're doing now. So thank you. Thank you, sir. And I did want to point out, you brought up an excellent point that even with uh, access to technology and putting things online, not everybody has great connectivity where they live, even if, even if they're financially able to afford the service, just distance wise, they are not able to connect. Uh, and some people don't have the computer skills or for a variety of reasons, uh, online is not ideal. Okay, well, thank you both for sharing um, all of this with us. That's a lot of information. It, it's also probably amazing to, to you when you start uh, listing all of the things you all have done with your staff and then you have to go back and between every listing, right? Several times. So thank you, appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are going to move on to uh, B, which is receive a report, hold a discussion, and give staff direction regarding the Friday update. And we have Mr. Mario Canasari. Yes, yes, Mayor, uh, members of council. Let me pull the presentation up. So bear with me just a minute. Of course. Maybe. <laughs> Let's try again. Here we go. Do you see that? Yes, sir. All right. Well, Mayor, Mayor members of council, um, I think this will be a ho hopefully a brief presentation. It's not very many slides, but hopefully it's mostly uh, uh, in input from you all to see uh, um, how we're doing. Um, to give you a little bit of background, um, the Friday update, uh, I believe previously it may have been called the city council update. Um, it's very, uh, uh, the Friday update, again, it's, it's very uniquely uh, published every Friday afternoon from our office, from the city manager's office. Uh, the information that's provided uh, to, uh, on the Friday updates are from, city, uh, from city departments. Um, the intent is to be able to provide information about what's going on within their departments on a weekly basis and keep keep you all informed, keep our staff informed, uh, and hopefully keep our community informed. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's distributed to you all via email. We also send a copy to the entire organization so they are apprised of what's happening. Um, we also post it on the city's website. So if you go to the city's website under city secretary, under departments and city secretary, you will see uh, probably five, uh, five to seven previous reports. We started this back in late August. And so you have all of those there uh, for the last number of weeks. And that way they're archived and they're available for anyone who, who ever wants to go uh, pursue those. Um, the intent is to uh, provide dates of upcoming events any kind of narrative going on in city departments, certainly incorporate pictures, reports, uh, any kind of supporting information where applicable um, so that it's not just so heavily text laden uh, and sort of break up the monotony of, of text and again, to give visuals and other uh, context for the viewer or for the reader. Um, its purpose is to tell stories of what's going on in the city. Uh, a lot of times, uh, the story is told for us, so the intent here is to help us tell the story for others. 
Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a central location of information of, of, as I mentioned, activities, dates, and any upcoming events. It's intended to keep folks informed uh, from all over the community uh, and also provides a resource uh, of information. Just to kind of give you an idea, this is, uh, again, not a full uh, document, just an excerpt of one, an excerpt of one uh, from September, end of September. Uh, just kind of gives you an update of, of kind of activities happening within the respective department uh, on, on one side. And then on the other is an excerpt of, of a, just a recent update when we had a, a group of firefighters that went to California to help assist in those in the major uh, uh, brush fires that are happening in California. That's just a picture of, of some of the, gr of the group that was there along with some of the equipment that they're being used. And, um, and again, it just uh, allows uh, you all and others to see what's going on around the organization. There's quite a bit of activity happening on a weekly basis. And quite honestly, sometimes it's a little bit of a, an objective view in which to do that. While we certainly have a lot of things going on, we don't want to just bombard uh, uh, the report with everything, but just things that we believe are uh, newsworthy. And, and, and that can be a very subjective thing. A lot of times these things come out in our weekly staff meeting with our department heads that something has com comes up that they're updating us on a, on a specific project or a specific initiative, maybe a grant that was a re uh, recently awarded. And it just seems, hey, this would be good information to share. Please include that in the Friday report. The department head or in, in their staff will, will put together uh, that brief piece of information and then we'll push it out uh, in the Friday report. Um, so really, that's really it on my presentation. Really what I'm looking for from you all to see if, number one, is there any changes that you'd like to see in the information? Um, is there any feedback that you may have on any of the content, the format, um, anything that you think we should be including, not be included? This is not intended to provide put anything in there that's uh, confidential in nature. It's stuff that's a uh, that would be considered a, a open record. Um, so again, this is stuff that could, should be shared to anyone and it keep people and keep, keeps folks informed. And really we're just asking for any feedback that you may have and, and see how you would like for us to, to continue on this journey. That's all I have and I can bring the presentation down at that point. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bolden. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, I, I, that's something that I normally read every week. Uh, I'm, I've been, I look forward to it, but even more so now because there are more relevant information that's provided. Uh, the, uh, in the past, it's sort of been what you call a, a quick read, but now there's information that I feel like uh, our community citizens in our community uh, will look at and say to see it being more transparent. Uh, but we don't want to inundate them with a lot of unnecessary information. Uh, I do know that, uh, 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 Mario, did you say it went to the website or did you went to the Facebook media, et cetera? Uh, uh, yes, sir. It is it, posted on the city's website. Um, it's on the under the city secretary's page. It's within two clicks. You're there. Oh, okay. You, you okay. can see the links of, of the report from last Friday and the ones from the previous Fridays as well. Yeah, is it any way considered going on the uh, city's uh, media page, Facebook uh, page, etc. On the, on the on the Facebook or any social media, we absolutely could. We could certainly create a link and just let people know that it's that it's there and uh, link them back to the city's website. Absolutely. Yeah, because it, it would be a while before everybody got to know that it's on the city website, but everybody would know that if it's on the Facebook page, uh, certainly. Great. Thank you, sir. That's good. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hens. There we go. Sorry. <clears throat> so on the format, I really liked last Friday's. I was curious, was that a, 
intentional choice to separate the text from the supporting information? It was. Um, yeah. it, it was just a way to, again, some folks are just, just give me the quick read, sort of the executive summary, and then the supporting documentation is in a separate document. So that way you can sort of hopefully it appeases both appetites, quick read, and then if you want more, more details uh, or more visuals or more graphics or more supporting, it's available to you as well. I, I love that. I was thinking uh, as soon as I saw that we had this this workshop, I thought, oh gosh, that would be my only um, contribution. I wouldn't want to if if somebody loves having the pictures in there, awesome. But trying to uh, kick the soccer ball back and forth with Luke or trying to chase Joel around the house, I've got enough time to skim through and and knock that out. I really enjoyed that, um, and it's really easy when the text is all consolidated, and then I can jump back later and look at the pictures. But that that was my only feedback. I really like the content. I've I've enjoyed those. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, I, I have enjoyed the change in format. Um, the content is uh, is very useful, I think, and it's it's a great thing for me to share um, with with other people in the community. And I I really appreciate your efforts and staff's efforts in uh, making those changes and kind of distilling it and making sure that there's there's good useful information in that. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Fisher. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Bolden hit on, on the only thing that I was gonna talk about, which was how to make it more widely accessible besides on, uh, on the city website. Um, I did get, um, uh, a request from a constituent who saw this on the agenda about it maybe being emailed out to a list, but I think that I mean I, I think that that could probably quickly become um, difficult for for Miss Janice. She's not even here to defend herself, um, but I think that just finding different ways, like Mr. Bolden suggested, um, posting a link to it on a link to it on Facebook things like that to get the word out more. I think it shows a good faith effort by the city um, in terms of transparency and in terms of dissemination of, of, of really good information. Um, and, and, and yeah, just making it as widely accessible as, as we can think of. I would just echo that. And, um, and thank you. I've also really enjoyed reading it. And in terms of, of suggestions for adding information or taking away, I have nothing. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I uh, I also enjoyed uh, having the links to supporting information. Um, I like being able to uh, sometimes skim through really quickly uh, and and just kind of hit the highlights and then be able to go back when I have time and sort of delve into it uh, over the weekend. Um, so I think. Uh, continue on as is. I think it, it looks really, really good. And um, I look forward to reading this week's. Great. Well, thank you all. So what we'll do, uh, we'll definitely maintain that same format with kind of splitting those things up into two separate attachments. And then we'll definitely add the social media aspect to, to let the public know that it's available and to link them back. And hopefully from there, it'll obviously encourage folks to even peruse other parts of our website. But, uh, but absolutely, this is a good way to push information out. Uh, we have had instances where the media is looking for stories. They're always looking to fill content and they've reached out to Amy Mahaffey and, and she has a report right in front of her and she says, oh, by the way, we're about to embark on this project and pass the information and, and, and it allows us to help share what's going on to the city with the local media. So it's a, hopefully a win-win for everybody. But I do appreciate everyone's feedback and input and it will continue to evolve and we'll continue to refine and hopefully enhance, uh, but definitely want to make it useful information for everyone. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, it is now 522. So we're going to take a five or six minute recess um, if anyone needs to before we continue with our uh, meeting. So does that sound okay with everyone? We'll see you in a few. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so we've just come off of a recess and are, are rejoining our meeting uh, City Council October 6, 2020. Uh, we began at 4.30 uh, with a work session and uh, had discussions about our community services operations, 
and the city manager's weekly um, Friday update. Uh, so now we are going to move ahead uh, to our regular session. And I, I believe we've had no one sign up for open forum. And uh, so we will move on to the consent agenda. And uh, if a member of council would like to remove something for uh, discussion, they may do so now. If not, chair would entertain a motion. I'd make a motion we pass the consent agenda as it's written. I'll second that. Okay, it's moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda as it is written. Uh, if there is no further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. And our agenda item 6A, consider approval to purchase six police vehicles. And it looks like we're going to get to visit with uh, Chief Seavey. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Jim Seavey, your Chief of Police here. I would like to bring before you um, the uh, to consider to purchase six police vehicles. A little bit confusing tonight, but I'm going to try to bring order to chaos. Um, um, we're, we are requesting to purchase four 2020 um, police, police package Tahoes. Uh, as well as the equipment that goes in them and it'll be installed in them. And then two 2021 police package vehicles. And the reason we're asking in, in this manner is because we can get these four 2020s at a bit of a savings right now, which is a good thing for us and use existing equipment for the most part to put into them. Um, the two 2021s that we wanna buy for canine, our canine equipment, is currently installed in older Tahoes and cannot be installed in 2020 um, in uh, in 2021 because the 2021s are going through a body style. So the equipment that is used to maintain the health and safety of our dogs while they're in these cars is worn out and has to be replaced. Well, this equipment we can buy it for 2020s, and then next time we change vehicles out, it won't fit in a in a new vehicle or we can buy 2021 vehicles now, buy the 2021 equipment to go into them. And when it comes time to swap those vehicles out in the future, we won't have to repurchase all that other equipment. So it's it's really a pretty significant cost savings for us to do it this way. Uh, the, the, the funds will come out of vehicle replacement fund. We have $400,000 in that fund. And uh, um, so we're looking at $166,008.71 on uh, the four 2020s, that will, will leave uh, 233,991 to be used for the two additional 2021s, plus the equipment, plus the installation. Essentially, when we get these vehicles from the outfitters, they come to us ready to go. They, they drop them off in the parking lot, our officers get in them and, and, um, and away they go. The, the six vehicles that we are replacing are all old vehicles. Most of them have well in excess of 100,000 miles on them. And uh, um, all the vehicles without exception have exceeded our minimal expectations in, in, in longevity and performance. So um, way, way back a long, long time ago, it seems like now when we started buying Tahoe, um, we gave you some minimal expectations in their performance and they have exceeded um, every every area, uh, fuel economy, um, mileage, resale value, um, this has been a real success story for us. So we're just looking to continue to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, let's start with Mr. Anderson. Um, I guess my only question is just clarification. This, this is money that was already budgeted for this purpose. Um, yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. We have that, vehicle that, replacement fund money goes into it each year, and mm -hmm. then uh, it's expended as uh, as needed. Okay, that's really my only question. Thank you, sir. Okay. And Miss Fisher. Hey, Chief CV, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Yeah. Um, just a couple questions for you. One, and you sort of answered this, but the reason that we that that the police department goes Tahoe's versus the other ones. I was looking at the, the sheets of, of, um, of the prices for different styles of police vehicles across the dealership. Um, 
is just because it's more bang for your buck, basically. It's just, we, we believe that it is the best deal out there. Plus something that we get in these Tahoes that you don't get in a sedan type vehicle. Almost all of our equipment is installed on the inside of the vehicle. So it's, it is mostly protected from the weather. And I think that's one of the reasons we get so much longevity out of our equipment. Okay. Um, and then question number two, I saw that the, the cars, the they're going to be replacing the Tahoes are going to be replacing um, other police vehicles from 2009 to 2015. I said I, I think I saw is that correct? Right, right. So is is do you see the top out basically pretty much at about that that time like between five years and and a little over five years that you need Probably. to start replacing them? You know our our goal is to have these vehicles last five five years minimum and anything above that is a little cream on the cake or a little 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 uh, gravy on the mashed taters but uh um um and and so we routinely will get 25 30 40 percent more life out of these cars than we ever anticipated okie dokie thank you that's what i wanted to know thank you uh mr bolden yes ma'am thank you uh, Chief, it's, it's not only mileage that is wear and tear on that uh, vehicle, but it's also idling time. Is that well, factored there in? Is. There is a lot of idle time. And uh, one of the really, really good things about these vehicles is we get a five-year maintenance plan on them. And uh, so we get we get five years worth of maintenance. Um, um, the, the idle time, um, even with idle time, um, back when we had Crown Victorias and uh, we did have some Dodges for a while, we 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 tried some other vehicles out at one point. Um, but you know they all get idle time, um, and I and that frustrates me to no end because I hate an idling car. I just really do. But fact is, our cars are so packed full of electronics, um, computers, radars, mobile video recorders. All that equipment has to run whether the officer is actually driving down the road or sitting on the side of the road or inside somebody's house. And uh, without that car running, um, all um, we're not going to have the mobile video recorders running. We're not going to have the communications equipment, the computers. Every time you get back in that car and restart, everything has to boot back up again. So um, my instruction to the officers is if you're going to be out of that car for any length of time and you are not going to be in contact with the public, shut it down. Um, but other than that, yeah, they, they have to sit there sometimes and run. And, uh, and I hate it, it hurts my feelings as a daddy who has kids who would let their, their my kids would let their cars sit outside sometimes and run forever and it just drove me crazy, still does. It's uh, necessary evil. All right, thank you, Chief. Thanks for the great job you're doing. Thank you, sir, very much. Uh, then Mr. Hens? <clears throat> I was mentally going down that same path, Roy. Um, are, are there special uh, war uh, extended warranties that we have to buy as a police force, or do we get lumped in with the rest of us suckers and we're we're footing the bill for the the uh, the crazy idle time? You know, I can't explain this. <laughs> so find something to knock on, or I don't know what to tell you, but we get these warranties as part of the purchase price. Five year um, powertrain warranty, and and um, um, I cannot tell you that the first time that my assistant chief Vince Griffin came to me and he said, you know, we get five-year warranties with these cars. And we sat there and, and I made him call him back and say, I, I, I need, I said, I need that. And he said, it is in writing. And I said, no, I don't believe it. But we get, we get these five-year warranties with these cars. That's part of the package. And I just, I can't explain it, but, but uh, I like it. Not one turn down. Here, I'm sure we're getting our money's worth. I think we are. Yes, sir. Awesome, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, and then um, I think there might be some citizens that might ask the question, uh, what happens with the vehicles that you are replacing? Well, those cars get stripped down. All their um, identifying marks as police vehicles get taken off of them and they go to auction. What Pam does with that money at auction, I don't know. I heard she, she takes vacations and what, but I'm not sure, um, but, uh, um, they're completely stripped down of all identifying marks. If you will recall, I think we still have one black and white Tahoe. And uh, I think we have one. And they're all black now. 
And the reason, one of the reasons that they're all black is number one, we save a bunch of money by not, you either get a black Tahoe or a white Tahoe and you paint it half black or half white. That's just a, um, one day you'll, you'll appreciate that when you're playing Trivial Pursuit. But uh, um, um, so we decided to go with all black. So you're saying, why did you decide to go with all black? Psychologists would say that there's something wrong with you. Well, we do that because we want to differentiate the look of our cars from all the other law enforcement agencies that come through our county. So our cars look pretty dramatically different. So if somebody calls in and says, I saw a speed and police car and it was all white and that's when I get a smile on my face and say, oh, it's not mine. And uh, so, um, and then when we strip them down, we don't have to repaint those white or black portions. They go, they get stripped and they go right out. Um, uh, and we, we use a company um, um, that auctions them off. And a lot of times, well, we've got one sitting out at the airport right now. It's our airport vehicle. So we, we try to find local uses for them if we can. And uh, other than that, they get auctioned off. And a lot of times they go to smaller police departments who are, are willing to take them and, and do maintenance on them. And sometimes they just go to resellers and, and away they go. Okay. Well, that's all I had. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate um, all of this information. And uh, we will now consider, um, inter unless there's any further discussion, uh, the chair will entertain considering an, a, a motion for approval. Well, I make a motion to approve the purchase of six police vehicles per the police chief. I'll second. Okay, moved and seconded. If no further comments or discussion, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Chief C. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. When they come in, I'll give you a call. You can come down and take one for a spin. Okay. <laughs> It'll be fun. Thank you. So, uh, item B, consider approval of ordinance amending ordinance number 1835-09-20. And we have Mercedes Franks, our library manager. All right. Can you see me and hear me? Yes, ma'am. We see you okay. and hear you. All right. That's half the battle. Now I need to present. Okay. And are you able to see my presentation? No. No. Not. And Hannah warned me that I would probably be asking you if you can see my presentation. And she is correct. All right. She gave me really good notes, but apparently I didn't. Oh, goodness. Oh, I'm sorry, here it is. Ah. Can you see something? Well, it's something different, but all I see is the Zoom screen. Well, luckily Brian is here to help me. Okay. Okay, we are calling our IT staff. Uh, I can go ahead and begin presenting if that would be helpful to expedite things. Okay, uh, the first one that I am uh, presenting, uh, I have two grants and that one is gonna be the uh, NAC bends. Is, is that what you, I, I'm sorry, now I'm fluttered, flustered, I apologize. Which one did you say? Uh, this is the one that's the CARES funds. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's going to be the NAC bins. Uh, this is a grant that uh, we wrote in, during our closure. Uh, it, this was a very quick turnaround type of grant. They, uh, when CARES money became available, uh, libraries were able to uh, apply for grants that were specific to uh, 
to libraries serving communities affected by, by COVID-19. Uh, this grant is, uh, we termed it NAC Benz. It's for $13,126. It is a reimbursement grant, uh, meaning that we have to uh, quarterly, we submit our receipts and then they will reimburse us. It runs from the current uh, October, uh, this one is actually starts from April, 2020. Uh, and then we'll go through September 2021. Uh, the funds that we're requesting, or the budget uh, that we're presenting, is uh, a subscription database for uh, something called BrainFuse. It is a tutoring software program. Uh, we're also requesting funds for hotspots. Uh, we're requesting uh, 10 hotspots, service plan for a year, for these 10 hotspots. Uh, and then we're also requesting uh, laptops to be purchased. And then uh, with the Microsoft Office uh, and, uh, and with, with the license for that. Uh, so now what I'll do is I'll go back and, and explain why we wrote this into the grant. Uh, we, when COVID-19 hit and the schools, most of them or many of them had been in uh, in their uh, on their spring break, uh, several several of the schools I know NISD, my son goes to school there. Uh, they just first extended their spring break and then eventually uh, had to go online, and everybody had to adjust very quickly. Uh, one of the challenges that many people faced: some people simply didn't have a device at all, uh, so that was one challenge. Or maybe the family had a computer but it was one computer for uh, multiple children. Uh, and so uh, it was very difficult for a lot of kids to do their, their schoolwork. Uh, so simply lack of a device. And so that is one of the reasons why we are asking for, uh, or why we budget it for laptops. So the idea here is that because laptops are expensive, that we would uh, make laptops available to families of city employees because we know that many of our city employees have children, whether they're in uh, K through 12 or, or uh, college. Uh, so in the immediate household, uh, these families would be able to check out uh, and depending on how, uh, what the demand is, they could keep it for at least two weeks, do some work. Uh, and if nobody's waiting, they can extend that period longer. Uh, we chose families of city employees just simply because of the cost and if if one became uh, damaged or lost, uh, we would be able to recoup that uh, from the employee. Uh, so that was one, uh, one approach that we tried to, uh, to address uh, lack of devices. Second thing that people uh, faced is a lack of internet connectivity. So uh, maybe they, uh, they just simply don't have internet at home. Uh, a lot of kids were doing their homework on their smartphones because they did have a data plan at least, uh, but maybe didn't have internet uh, access on their device. And so that is why uh, the hotspots would be helpful for those children. Uh, now we wrote this grant uh, back in June, it was, that was the deadline. Uh, that was before we knew that our big, the biggest school district in our county, NISD was gonna provide hotspots for all their children. Uh, so our original, plan had been that the hotspots would go to apartment complexes or laundry facilities, uh, uh, laundry uh, services, uh, to try to reach a greater number of people. So we're still uh, aiming for that. Uh, if we are not able to get as many organizations or businesses that are willing to host a hotspot, then we will uh, simply just make them available for people to check out. Uh, and so uh, we still feel that that is still going to be a great need for a lot of people. Uh, even if they have internet at home, sometimes they're very limited on their data plan. And so these hotspots will uh, help them be able to do their, their schoolwork. Or uh, Also, we're looking not just to assist uh, school children with their schoolwork, uh, but people that just need uh, internet access to apply for jobs or for, uh, for training. Uh, so these hotspots will be helpful to that. Uh, the company that we're looking at, uh, Verizon, is one that... Uh, Many libraries across the country already do hotspot lending programs. So uh, we're just learning or taking advantage of what others have already experienced as far as 
uh, lending policies and uh, procedures for all this. And we're just going to incorporate that. Uh, the uh, third item that is uh, that is part of this grant is a uh, tutoring software that we call BrainFuse Tutoring Software. Uh, or that is one company that, that we're looking at. Uh, we've demoed that product and it's a really neat product. Uh, with the children being at home this past spring uh, and having to uh, do all their work remotely, uh, teachers are just spread thin. And so they don't always have access to a teacher uh, so this tutoring software is uh, a subscription service. Kids can go uh, on this website, they log in, and there we get, I believe it's um, 10 live sessions with a tutor. So tutor is based somewhere here in the United States, or they have thousands of tutors that they've uh, vetted. Uh, everybody has at minimum a college degree, and many of them have a master's degree. Uh, but they are, and they go through training uh, to make sure that they're able to uh, to provide quality tutoring in an online format. So these are sessions that kids can log in and get assistance in a variety of topics. They even have a writing lab where a kid could submit their writing sample and get feedback on that. Uh, and then with that bundle is also something called Vet Now, and that is a. a, a that module uh, works with uh, veterans who are uh, trying to go back into the job market. So helping them with uh, career exploration, uh, resume writing, uh, basic career skills that, uh, uh, that would be suitable for the workplace. And so that's part of that uh, BrainFuse uh, software. It's a bundled package. Uh, again, uh, we saw lots of different needs that people had in the community when they had to go to online learning. And because of the possibility of having to return to online learning, uh, or just because we do have a significant number of students that are doing online learning, uh, we thought we'd try to address uh, some of the issues that people had uh, in a variety of different ways. Um, and I'm sorry, I spoke really fast. <laughs> uh, 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 do you have any questions about the service or uh, or how we came up with this or anything? Okay, well, let's check and see. Okay. Uh, sure. No, ma'am, I don't. I don't have any questions. I think that um, what you're asking for makes a lot of sense, or what you were asking for makes a lot of sense and was well thought out. And and I'm glad that that you guys were able to to get it. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bolden. Uh, yeah, I guess I may have one question that sort of concerned me about the laptops. Uh, the grant wasn't specific in who, uh, how could we use those laptops? Uh, and this means that the general public is not going to have access to these uh, uh, laptops. And when I say general public, I mean, those that are not uh, members of the household of the city. That is correct. Uh, we do have uh, some older laptops. I don't know if uh, I actually haven't asked if that would be a possibility to maybe put the older laptops into circulation. Uh, but no, the, the, but you're correct that the laptops for this grant would be just for uh, city employees, the families of city employees. So uh, there was no no specifics in the grant, right? As to how they could be used. No, the the, the intended, no, not, not anything specific. Uh, we're assuming that, that people will check them out for their children or for their spouses that might be going to school. Uh, but uh, really and truly when, when they have them checked out, we, we don't know if they're on uh, Facebook or or something. We're hoping that they're using them for school purposes. Thank you. Mr. No questions. I, I, I'm grateful we got the grant. I think it's a good use. Okay. okay. And uh, Mr. Anderson. Yes, I just had one, well, sort of two-part question. Um, 
what are the criterion for businesses that you're looking for to host the hotspots and how are you going about approaching businesses to do that hosting? Okay. Uh, I have, uh, haven't actually, I started when I first wrote the grant, uh, I approached the apartment uh, association and they are, they are interested, although some of their facilities already offer uh, Wi-Fi to their residents. Uh, so today at a meeting that I was at, uh, the 21-7 meeting, uh, I mentioned this and several people mentioned some, uh, some housing units that might be uh, receptive to this. Uh, really, the only criteria is uh, that they have somewhere secure to, to host the device, uh, somewhere where it won't be stolen or damaged. It doesn't produce too much of a signal, so it would be uh, so it's it is limited in how many people might be able to access it. Uh, Michael Donnell has done a wonderful job of securing a, a, a service called DSN, I believe, uh, that offers filtering capabilities. Uh, that was one of the things that we had to uh, demonstrate that we were uh, going to be in compliance in compliance with the Children's Internet Protection Act. Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure if that answered your question other than, that, uh, definitely wants people that, uh, they'd be willing to host and wouldn't mind people being in their parking lot or, or if it's a youth, maybe, a like a church that it would be open to, uh, their parishioners, but not necessarily to, to the public. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so if there, uh, if no one has any additional uh, questions or need clarification or any discussion, uh, the chair would uh, entertain a motion for approval of the ordinance. I move that we approve agenda item B as written. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve item 6B as it is uh, written. Uh, so no discussion all those in favor please say aye. Aye. aye aye any opposed motion passes and again for uh item uh let's see 6c uh consider of ordinance amending ordinance number 135-09-0 um and and we also will hear again from ladies price our library manager. please go right ahead. okay thank you uh, this is a grant that our assistant library manager wrote. Uh, it was a, a project very uh, dear to her heart. Uh, Crystal Hicks is our assistant manager, and uh, she is always looking for programs to uh, that are innovative and that are going to bring people into the library and are uh, provide a unique experience for people. So in uh, early this year, and it seems like a long time ago, but early this year, she had started a program called uh, Library Encounter Boxes based on uh, subscription boxes that one signs up for, like if you like uh, cheese of the month or steak of the month or something like that. Uh, but her uh, take on this was that it would be a library encounter box. Uh, people fill out a, a, a brief questionnaire on Google Forms uh, asking what their reading interests are. And she usually has a theme for that month. Uh, this summer she did one for Harry Potter. And so there'll be uh, maybe a recipe or a craft item uh, and as well as a library book selected for that person. And uh, so each box is a little bit different. And so she started out this program uh, just offering uh, quite a, a, a good selection. She started off, I think, with 50 boxes and they immediately People just immediately signed up for them. Uh, and so every month that she did them before we had to close for COVID, uh, they were super popular, uh, but they were a little bit labor intensive. Uh, so when uh, the grant cycle opened up for the special projects grant from Texas State Library and Archives Commission, uh, she uh, thought that would be a that this project would be uh, good for this grant. And so she wrote this grant. Uh, it is a special projects grant from Texas State Library and Archives Commission, as well as the ILMS. It is a reimbursement grant, again, uh, so we will have to quarterly uh, submit our receipts uh, and then, uh, of course, a final report uh, in uh, September of next year. Uh, but was she purchased with, uh, was she uh, 
suggested in this grant, proposed in this grant, uh, it's a $9,510. Uh, the bulk of that is for a laser cutter. Uh, that was the, the item that was taking a long time for the staff to have to cut out uh, all the things for the for the crafts and for the, uh, she's also using these for uh, STEM kits for, uh, for school age kids. So all that stuff that she did, she would put, put together fabulous uh, items, but they would just take a, a long time. So with the laser cutter machine, uh, that'll greatly reduce uh, how many, uh, how much time it takes to produce, and she'll probably be able to produce even more. Uh, so her plan is to uh, offer them again to the to the adults who really like, uh, they really like those grab and go type kits. And so this will, uh, they'll be able to have their own, uh, not just for the kids, uh, but she's also working with the school librarians. Uh, now with COVID and the restrictions of not being able to uh, visit the kids as much. Again, this grant was written uh, pre-COVID. Uh, we're not gonna be able to do it uh, as we initially intended, but we'll still be able to reach the school librarian who will then be able to distribute these to the school kids. So we just we just won't be able to be as involved uh, in the actual program as, as we had hoped. Uh, but they're still going to be able to participate. So there's uh, the 8760 for the laser cutter machine and then uh, and then for the logo boxes for them to be put in. And then the 750 is for uh, the supplies, the consumables. OK. Uh, uh, I just, uh, oh, uh, I'm glad you mentioned it. Uh, this was actually featured recently in National Geographic, their online magazine. Uh, so we're really uh, tickled pink that uh, our program was mentioned among, among several libraries. Well, it's very unique. Um, let's see if the council has uh, any, any questions real quick. Uh, Mr. Bolden? Uh, no question. Thanks to the grant writers. Yeah, Mr. Hans. Same as Roy. I, I love it. That's great. Thank you. Mr. Anderson. Yeah, th thank you for yeah. the creativity and the request for that particular piece of equipment um, that will not only be useful for the, the craft projects, but it's a tremendous learning tool for, uh, for kids and adults going forward. So I, I think that was a wonderful choice. Thank you very much. And Ms. Fisher? Nothing, just super cool idea. I love the subscription boxes too. So that is a really neat idea. And I'm glad that she, uh, that Crystal took the initiative to, to find some money to continue to make it happen. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Yes. And I, you know, I, I'm looking for a laser cutter, cutter, but it would be great to, to be able to try to find a way to make it sustainable. If it's going to be that popular for our next fiscal year and the, in the years uh, in the future. So, um, and I'd like to see one of them. So maybe at some point um, um, I could, I could, I need to check that out. So thank you very much, Mercedes. Um, if there are no further questions, um, Chair would entertain a motion to approve the ordinance. Well, I make a motion to approve item six C. Edited and written. A second. Okay, moved and seconded that we approve item 6C as it is written. Um, if no further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, so now, uh, pursuant to Texas Government Code section 551.071, uh, it is uh, October 6th. It is now 6.05 p.m. And we will be going into executive session. Okay, thank you, Meredith. Uh, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071, uh, the time is now 6.35 p.m., October 6th, 2020. And uh, we council has returned from executive session. There was no action taken. And that concludes our meeting of October 6th, 2020. Thank you all for attending.